do you ever wonder how and where to find your ideal clients? If so, stay tuned because we will be talking about where to find clients. Welcome to Biz Success in 15 podcast. I'm your host, Cindy J, the Visibility Wiz, and I'm here to guide you as you step into who you are with outrageous confidence for more visibility, influence, and profits. Be sure to visit visibilitychecklist.com and get your free visibility checklist now. Today, we'll be talking about where to find your ideal clients. You know that old saying, if I had a dollar for every time somebody asked me where to find their clients, I'd be a billionaire by now. So it's something that we all struggle with. And there's a right way to go about it and a wrong way. There are some three steps that you need to take to really know where to find your ideal clients. Because there is not no magical formula that everybody uses. There's something that's specific for you that you should use based on your personality, your beliefs and values, as well as that as your clients. So how do you do that? Right? So first of all, I do want to tell you the number one thing that 90% of coaches do that fail. 90% of coaches fail because they do not choose a niche. Let me repeat that. 90% of coaches fail because they don't choose a niche. So uh, you may wonder what that has to do with finding clients, but it has everything to do with finding clients. So you, the first step for you to take is to discover what your niche is. Now, your niche is not your ideal uh, client. Your niche is what I call your target market. It's who are you going to be working with? Um, So whenever you think of your target market, um, you it's a very easy thing to think of. It's like my ideal audience is their gender, what their age is, their location, work, family status, and want to solve what's their pain point. So basically, it's like, who do you serve? And what do you help them solve? So, for example, my ideal audience is solopreneurs 40 years plus who live in the United States or Canada who want to be seen as a trusted and in-demand expert in their field. And they enjoy stories, quotes, and all things spiritual. So you can really dig down your ideal audience. Now, In this, my ideal audience is actually the solopreneurs. And this is the big, big, big lake that you're fishing in. So a lot of times people, they're like, where do I find my clients? Well, I can guarantee you, you can find your clients anywhere online. They're on Facebook, they're on TikTok, they're on Pinterest, they're on Twitter, they're on uh, Instagram, they're on LinkedIn, they're reading articles, they're watching YouTube. They are everywhere online. So it's not necessarily where to find them. It's how to get in front of them, how to get in front of your target market, and then having that message that attracts your client to you. So there's a big difference between like going out there, where do I find a client? Where do I find a client? Where do I find a client? Which is what so many people do. But first of all, you choose your niche. Who are you helping? Are you helping women over 40? Are you helping men? Are you helping solopreneurs? Are you helping single moms? Are you helping spiritual entrepreneurs? Are you helping brick and mortar people? Are you after um, uh, the CEOs of large companies? Who is your target audience? And this is your niche. Your niche is your target audience and the problem that you help them solve. So, First of all, determine your niche and determine who your target audience is. 
Uh, you want to know their age, their gender, their work, their income, their location, their family. You want to know what their pain points are. What are their fears? What are their challenges? What are their frustrations? What is it they want to learn? What are their big dreams? Like if they had a dream so big that they're almost afraid to say what it is, what is that dream? And yes, it's your job to discover these things. Everybody says, how do I figure this out? Well, first of all, you need to start asking questions. You can ask questions in any of the social media platforms and really get to know people better. So then it's your ideal client. Your ideal client. So the first step is to discover your target market, to really clearly identify it. The second step to find your ideal clients is to identify your ideal clients. Because when you know exactly who your ideal client is, it's much easier to find, it's much easier to attract them online. Because there are so many people, everybody's always like, all the noise, all the noise. How do I stand out from the crowd? Well, you want to stand out by, from the crowd by speaking to one individual person. So whenever you find your clients, I always say you want to write down everything you love about them and everything they love about you. Again, it's their name, their age, their family, their location. What's their characteristics? Are they an introvert? Are they an extrovert? What, uh, what type of personality do they have? What type of sense of humor do they have? Are, uh, what motivates them? Are they introverted or extroverted? Are they analytical or creative? Are they passive or act? Um, active? Are they fickle or are they loyal? So what are their personality traits? And then what's their interests and what are their beliefs? If they were say they believed something, what is it that they believe? What's their frustrations? What's their goals? The more you fine tune this, the easier it is for you to speak to that one person. I have a little cheat sheet and I'll be sharing, uh, really, if you go to the podcast page, bizsuccessin15.com forward slash clients, you will see a link to where to find clients. It's a little workbook that's going to guide you through everything that I'm speaking about. So you just like where to find clients and then you can follow it and you can really fine tune who your ideal audience is and who your perfect client is. Because once you know this, then you can go into the next step, which is really discovering where to find them and how. Um, talking again about your ideal clients, what about the two of you uh, makes you click? What do they love about you? What do you love about them? And what? who do you need to be to attract your perfect clients? Uh, who do you need to be? Because sometimes you might need to step up your game a tad to attract your ideal perfect clients. And remember, it's okay to do that. We are all growing and learning. Even though, you know, you might think, oh, I'm supposed to be the expert. I, you know, I should know everything. Nobody knows everything. Nobody. Everybody is constantly learning. Your eight, nine figure earners are constantly learning. So remember that. Okay. Uh, but once you know this, now it's time to discover um, the 10 questions to ask yourself before uh, any strategy to attack clients, okay? Uh, so the 10 questions are, is it something I'm going to enjoy? And if you go to, again, bizsuccessin15.com forward slash clients, you can download this. And I have a little graph and stuff for you to fill out. So it'll be easier for you. But number one, is this something you're going to enjoy? Number two, is your ideal audience there? Number three, are other brands that serve your ideal audience there? Number four, are these other brands active on, the, uh, on that channel? And have you identified or have you looked and seen what might be missing? A lot of times people start talking about like one thing. For instance, I'm known as the visibility whiz. 
Now, everybody, whenever they're talking about visibility, they're always like, you do video, get confident on video, 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 video. So what was missing from that conversation was how to get visible off camera. Yes, how to get visible off camera. So I started talking about how to get visible off camera. Because if you're not comfortable with camera yet, you don't want to be utilizing camera. Okay, you need to be comfortable with it. So there's always something that's missing. Usually it's like, man, what are these people doing that are driving me crazy? And then start talking about that. Be a little bit controversial. It's totally fine. Then you can ask, does this platform belief fit the beliefs and values of my perfect client? Does it fit the personality of my ideal client? And does the platform align with my heart and soul? If you don't choose something that aligns with you, that you enjoy, you're not going to be consistent with it. And consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. The more consistent you are, the more clients you're going to find. And does the uh, platform align with your personal beliefs and personal goals and business goals? And lastly, how much work and time is it going to take me for to do this? So you ask yourself those questions. It's not where to find your clients. The real question you should be asking is how do I find my dear clients? And that's not even the right question. The right question is how do my ideal clients find me? So every time you start saying, where do I find my clients? Say, how do my ideal clients find find me? It's a completely different question. And whenever you start asking yourself, how do my ideal clients find me? You're putting yourself in the driver's seat and you're telling yourself, what can you do to attract them to you? If you're saying, where do I find my ideal clients? You're making it external because your clients are everywhere. I got a client now I was sitting at the airport waiting for an airplane one time. So your clients can literally be anywhere. Know that you do not have to be on every single social media platform out there. Choose one and get really good at it. And whenever you're really good at it, then if you want to, you can go to others. But one should be your main focus. You don't want to be spending a lot of time every day. So if you spend an hour a day with one platform, you're going to start seeing results. So let's talk about the platforms a little bit, uh, because this is where so many people really like, they're like, which platform should I use and why? Again, when you download uh, your little workbook, uh, these are the stats effective June 20, um, June of 2020. However, you know, I'm sure it's still very, very, very similar. But the big thing to know is that the different platforms have different, people go to them for different reasons. So why do people go to Facebook? They go there to be entertained and to engage and see what's up with other people. Why do people go to Instagram? They go to the Instagram for entertainment. They want to be entertained. They're not necessarily going there to engage and they're not going there to learn stuff. They are going there to be entertained. The same with TikTok. Um, and YouTube. YouTube can be entertainment. Sometimes you'll go to YouTube to learn something. So I, I would add the education in there for YouTube. And for LinkedIn, people go to LinkedIn for education. They don't go to LinkedIn to be entertained. So if you want to be telling stories, if you want to be dancing, if you want to do little skits on uh, or reels, that doesn't attract most of the LinkedIn people because they're in a different mindset. So if you get all dressed up and you go to this uh, black tie event, there's a certain, you know, people, people talk differently. They engage differently because it's a different format than if you go to um, your local pub down the street that has a live band and dancing. You're going to dress different. You're going to be talking different. Everything about the atmosphere is different. And this is how the different platforms are. They're all different. And LinkedIn is a very education type place. People want to go there. They want to find answers to their problems now. They, they don't go there to be entertained. And if you're trying to entertain them on LinkedIn, you're going to be losing them. Uh, for Pinterest, uh, these people, again, they want to be entertained. Same as Snapchat 
And um, then you go to what is their function? So with Facebook, their function is community. They have uh, their fans. They focus more on uh, the groups and then the stories. Instagram, uh, somebody has to like, they like watching the short reels. They also like pictures. But again, they're going there to be entertained. For LinkedIn, they're focused on learning. For Pinterest, they like uh, creating graphics and they like sharing them. Okay. So if you don't like doing graphics or you don't have somebody doing graphics, Pinterest is not going to be with you. And then for um, for Twitter, they like things in bite-sized pieces. And for YouTube, they enjoy watching videos for fun and education. So remember, whenever you have these, why do people go there? And does this fit your personality? You know, I like to have fun. I like to be silly. I like to do crazy things. So LinkedIn has never been my main place that I go. I love Facebook and I've lately really been uh, learning and getting into Instagram Reels a little bit more. And in the future, you're going to start seeing a lot more Reels from me. And know that you can be successful without being on all the platforms. Now, I know multi seven-figure earners who do not use social media at all. So don't think you have to use social media if you hate it. If you hate it, if things don't align with you, do not use that. So many people are using strategies that make them sick to their stomach. You have to find what works for you. So there are multiple, multiple seven-figure earners that they do not use social media at all. So where do they find their clients? They find their clients through joint venture partners and through email. That's it. They build their list. They speak. They have joint venture partners. They build their email list and they do not do social media. And that's fine. There are multiple seven figure earners that don't use social media that only use writing. They have writing usually along with speaking, uh, but they will write for different uh, big industries. They will guest post on different articles where they are found online through the written word, and then people find them, they go back to their website, they get on their email list. And there are multiple seven-figure earners that only use Twitter, that only use Pinterest, that only use Facebook, that only use Instagram, that only use um, LinkedIn, any of the social media platforms. So don't believe you need to be everywhere. You only need... If you have a $1,000 product, $1,000 product, you only need to sell 100 of those in a year to make 100 k If you have a $2,000 product, you only need to sell 50 of them. If you have a $5,000 product, you only need to sell 20 of them. If you have a $10,000 product, you only need to sell 10 of them. So if you have a really good, even a one-on-one -on -one program, for $10,000 for the year, you need 10 clients to be making six figures. So know that you don't need to be in front of everybody. You want those perfect ideal clients. You want to get in front of your target audience because that's where your ideal clients are going to be hanging out. Your ideal clients are attracted to your message. They're attracted to what you have. And this is where how you find clients. So your 15 minute challenge is simply to go to bizsuccessin15.com forward slash clients, uh, download that workbook and fill out all the answers. Uh, it, it's a place you can print it out, you can answer it, but there's little charts in there. All the questions I just asked are there for you. I've made it really easy for you to fill out to start figuring out where to go to get in front of your ideal clients. Again, remember the question is, how, what do I do for my ideal clients to find me? That's the question. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Biz Success in 15 for you to step into who you are with outrageous confidence. Big hugs. Bye-bye.